scripture. I'm going to ask that Minister Arlene Robinson will come and lead us through our throne of grace. Amen. Amen. And when you have it, you'll find these words. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sin. Be blessed by the word that will come forth over this pulpit. Lord, we pray that you would continue to minister to us through your spirit. Lord, because we don't always know what to do in every situation that comes at us. But Lord, we pray that you would whisper in our ear and continue to direct us daily. Because your word teaches us, Lord, that you will direct our path. Lord, we just pray that you would bless the baby that's going to be dedicated on today. Lord, bless all those that will be around her, that they will be a fitting example of the way that you call us to live, and that they will help that baby grow and nourish that baby in the name of Jesus. Lord God, and we just pray that you would bless the servants for Christ Baptist Church as a whole, that, Lord, we will be that beacon on the hill that you have called us to be. Lord, we pray that you will walk with our bishop who leads this congregation. Help him, Lord, to always, always keep you first and foremost in his mind with everything that comes at him. Because, Lord, we know that the devil throws darts at anyone that tries to represent you. But help us, Lord, to keep on our shield and to have on our helmet and to have on our full armor at all times that we may continue, Lord, to follow you. Continue, Lord, to be an example of you. Lord, we just pray. We pray, Lord, that those of us who have been called will answer our calling and that we will 
walk according to the way that you would have us to walk. Lord, because there's so many that say that they are yours, but they act differently, Lord. Help us to act the way that we ought to act. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, after all is said and done, we give you all the honor, yes. all the praise. Yes. Because we know, Lord, that it is you who both work in us to do and to want to do of your good will. Yes. So, Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God for that. As the month of February, we celebrate uh, black history. And we do have a number of individuals uh, that do want to share their thoughts on today. Everybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to get ready. I'm not going to have everybody come at once. But if you just throw your finger up, I know which order you going to come. You ain't got to yell, I'll see you. Nobody else will see you. So when we come to that time, we'll go ahead and get you called on up. Thank you. Um, I'll start it off. And today's reading that I have is in regards to the Tuskegee Airmen. I couldn't decide on one person, so I got a group of people. The Tuskegee Airmen were the first black military aviators in the U.S. Army. They were called the United States Army Air Corps. A prosecutor of the United States Air Force trained at the Tuskegee Army Field in Alabama. They flew more than 15,000 15, individuals in Europe and in North Africa during the World War II. Their impressive performance earned them more than 150 distinguished flying crosses and helped encourage the eventual integration of the United States Armed Forces. During the 1920s and the 1930s, the exploits of recording pilots like Charles Lindbergh and Amelia Earnhardt had captivated the nation and thousands of young men and women clamored to follow their footsteps. But young African Americans who aspired to become pilots met with significant obstacles. Racism, segregation, the belief that black people could not learn to fly or operate an aircraft. In 1938, with Europe teetering on the brick of another great war, President Franklin D. Roosevelt announced he would expand the civilian pilot training to African Americans. At that time, racial segregation remained the rule in the U.S. Armed Forces, as well as much as our country. Much of the military established was from the South. Believed that black soldiers were inferior to whites and performed relatively poor. But as the ACC began ramping up its training program, black newspapers like Chicago Defender and the Pittsburgh Courier joined civil rights groups like the NAACP, arguing blacks to be pilots. In September 1940, President Roosevelt's White House responded to such lobbying campaigns by announcing that training would begin for black Americans. For the training site, the War Department chose Tuskegee, Alabama, the Tuskegee Army Airfield. It was under construction at that time. Home to the prestigious Tuskegee Institute, another black man founded. Booker T. Washington. It was located in the heart of the Jim Crow in the South. By the time the 32nd flew its last combat mission on April 26, 1945, two weeks before the Germans surrendered, 
the Tuskegee Airmen have flown more than 15,000 sorties over two years. After their brave service, the Tuskegee Airmen returned home to their country where they were faced with systematic racism and prejudice. But they did represent an important step forward in preparing the nation for the racial integration of military which President Harry S. Truman had issued the Executive Order 9981, disagreeing the U.S. Armed Forces. A number of original airmen will go on to have long careers, including Benjamin Davis Jr., who became the first black general for the U.S. Armed Air Force. George Spanky Roberts, who became the first black commander of a racially integrated Air Force. And then you have Colonel Daniel James Jr., who became the nation's first black four-star general in 1975. More than 300 original Tuskegee Airmen were handed, were handed to receive the Congressional Gold Medal by President Bush in 2007. Finally, two years later, surviving Tuskegee Airmen were given the opportunity and invited to attend the inauguration of the first black president of the United States, mm -hmm. who once wrote that his career in public service was made possible by the paths of heroes like the Tuskegee Airmen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. At this time, we're going to turn out with hymn books to page 401. 401. This little light of mine. <laughs> Of Service for Christ Baptist Church, I'd like to welcome you 
to our sanctuary service this morning. Uh, the third, no, fourth, fourth Sunday in February, uh, continuing with, with Black History Month. We are so glad to see you all here today. It just brings such a sweet spirit to this uh, sanctuary to have you here. Um, to hear the baby talking, uh, it's just uh, so sweet in here. And so we are thankful to God that you counted not robbery to get up early and come out here uh, this morning. Do we have any first-time visitors to Servants for Christ Baptist Church? Amen. 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 Would you like to introduce yourself? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continuously be in my mouth. I am Chaplain Edna Harmon Battle, and I'm a guest of Minister Arlen Robinson. Amen. Amen. As she did come out for a long time. But I was surprised her. But I range from um, First Time Island Baptist Church in Leesburg, Virginia, where Reverend Dr. Carl Singer is the pastor there. And it's good to be here in the house of the Lord. I've been to Bishop Jones's carnation, and oh. I was there with him and the First Lady. Okay. And I thank you all, and God bless each and every one of you. Amen. 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 Right. Um, and with that, um, again, we uh, welcome you all here this morning, and um, hope, uh, we, I know you'll have an enjoyable uh, service with us. Uh, my Black History moment is just some, uh, maybe some little known facts about Black History, that uh, Black History Month you may not know. Uh, the first, uh, Carter G. Woodson was the creator of what we now know as Black History Month. When he established it, it was Negro History Week and existed for seven days. Um, uh, every year, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History chooses a theme around Black History Month celebrations, and this year's theme is Black Resistance uh, to acknowledge the people and organizations that fought oppression. Um, one of the Black History facts that might be new to you, the United States, Canada, and Germany observed Black History Month in February. However, the UK, Ireland, and the Netherlands uh, celebrate Black History in October. I didn't know other countries celebrated Black History, so that was news for me. Um, the first state to do away with the practice and abolish slavery was the state of Vermont in New England in 1777. Um, Dr. James McCune Smith was the first African American to hold a medical degree he was the first African-American to run a pharmacy. Um, he, because he would, would not get accepted into an American university, he had to travel all the way to Scotland to study medicine and get his medical degree uh, from the University of Glasgow. He graduated in 1837 and practiced medicine for about two decades in New York, in Manhattan. Uh, during that time, he was active with the Underground Railroad, ha helping um, people find their way to freedom. Um, and despite all his accomplishments, he was never admitted to the American Medical Association. The first public high school for African Americans was right here in Washington, D.C., Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. It opened in 1870, five years after, after the end of the Civil War. Uh, the school graduated the first black army general, the first black uh, presidential cabinet member, and the first black graduate of the Naval Academy. You all know that when uh, Kamala Harris and uh, Joe, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were elected in 2020, that broke a major glass ceiling yeah. for um, women and um, black women in particular. But she was not the first black woman to run uh, for vice president. Uh, in 1948, there was a journalist named Charlotta Bass who became the vice presidential nominee of the Progressive Party. Her running mate was a gentleman named Vincent Hallinan, and she was also from the state of California, just like Kamala Harris. Uh, you all heard of Sister Rosetta Tharp, yeah. known as the godmother of rock and roll? Yeah. 
Uh, she was born in 1915, and she blazed a musical trail with her voice and her rolling guitar. She combined uh, a lot of different music into her own brand of music, and people like uh, Chuck Berry, Elvis Presley, Bob Dylan, and Johnny Cash credited her influence on their music. And the last one, um, many people learn about Rosa Parks, but you may not have heard of Claudette Coleman, a young girl who refused to get up uh, for a white passenger. In 1955, she was just 15 years old, and she stayed seated and refused to move to the back of the bus for a white passenger. She was arrested, um, but um, Claudette Colvin learned about early activists like Harriet Tubman uh, in school before her arrest. This is why it's important to teach black history in our school. It's important to learn about black history because um, we don't want our history to be washed away. Amen. 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 So we were on the same page. Oh, good. <laughs> but um, this is in addition, so it's just a follow up of her. Um, her information, because it's also regarding Carter G. Wilson, but it goes a little further. It says, during the dawning decades of the 20th century, it was commonly presumed that black people had little history besides the subjugation of slavery. Today, it is clear that blacks have significantly impacted the development of social, political, and economic structures of the United States and the world. Credit for the evolving awareness of the true place of blacks in history can in large part be bestowed on one man, Carter G. Wilson, and his brainchild, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, Inc., is continuing Woodson's tradition of disseminating information about black life, history, and culture to the global community. Him being known as the father of black history, he was the son of a former slave, a former slave, and understood how important gaining a proper education is when striving to secure and make the most out of one's divine right of freedom. Although he did not begin his formal education until he was almost 20, his dedication to study enabled him to earn a high school diploma in West Virginia his first undergraduate degree from Berea College in Kentucky, and bachelor and master's degree from the University of Chicago in just a few years. In 1912, Woodson became the second African American to earn a PhD at Harvard University. Recognizing the dearth of information on the accomplishments of blacks in 1915, Dr. Woodson founded the association for the study of Negro life and history, now called the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, and the um, acronym used for it is AFALH. I'll just say a South. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correct, but under Woodson's pioneering leadership, the association created research and publication outlets for black scholars with the establishment of the journal of Negro History in 1916 and the Negro History Bulletin in 1937, which garners a pop popular public appeal. In 1926, Dr. Woodson initiated the celebration of the Negro History Week, which corresponded with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. In 1976, this celebration was expanded to include the entire month of February. And today, Black History Month garners support throughout the country as people of all ethnic and social backgrounds discuss the Black experience. ASALH views the promotion of Black History Month as one of the most important components of advancing Dr. Woodson's legacy. In honor of all the work that Dr. Carter G. Woodson has done to promote the study of African-American history, 
an ornament of Woodson hangs on the White House Christmas tree each year. I want to thank both of the ministers. Thank both Minister Trash and Minister Robinson for those Black History Moments. We have one more. Come on, Bishop, it's your time. <laughs> sung that song today it, 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 it lacks meaning and sophistication you know, but this is the day that the Lord has made mm -hmm. y'all sung it like this this is the day this is the day I didn't hear a thing <laughs> nothing all I heard was a voice from the pulpit and I know all you are Christians and good Baptists and Methodist people wherever church you come from but we need a little more than that. All right. Let's stand up. All right, man. Stand up. This is the day. A couple verses. Let's try it again. I want to hear it. This is the day. This is the day. If it's your church or not, wherever you go and praise is going on for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have to always raise our hand and praise God like there is no end to today and no tomorrow is coming. Amen. Let's get it serious. Let's take it seriously. And let's praise God like, like we really, really, really mean it from our heart. It is a big deal. Sometimes I don't feel like getting up and praising God, but I have to press my way on. Because I know that God is worth what? He's worthy of all what? All the praise, what else? All the honor and all of the glory. You got to see how the people around the world worship God. They don't even start a service until they spend about 20, 30 minutes just praising God, coming to the altar, falling down on their knees and worshiping God. And we need to adopt that same type yes, of worship Lord. Yes, Lord. for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. He died and he shed his blood. Amen. 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 So that we could have the right yes. to eternal life. Amen. That's good news. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said, why are you hollering at me? I'm not hollering. I'm not hollering. <laughs> All right now. That's my wife back there. Yeah. <laughs> Not the end of battle, uh, this might be your first time in the sanctuary with us today. 
when you've been online watching our broadcast for over a year or more, Amen. you make a positive comment. I give God honor and praise for you, for you, for making your way that long distance. That's right. That's right. All the way down long, I'm going to drive, got to be about an hour from Leesburg. It's down Leesburg area, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm recently moved into uh, the Largo area. Oh, you well, know, right. You know us Right now, well, we're going to see you a little more often then. <laughs> Amen, yeah. But that's still a long drive, though. And, and you were there for years, and thank you so much. I didn't have a chance to speak with you uh, during the uh, consecration service, but I looked back and saw you. I was so happy to see you. Yes. I'm so happy to see you there. You look bright in them white glasses. I'm going to have to go back to the pharmacy <laughs> and get me a pair of uh, ophthalmologists and get me a pair of them white glasses. They radiate. <laughs> Amen. And uh, Minister uh, Gwendolyn, we've been so happy to see you. We're praying for your husband, Lenny, and we're so happy to see you. You come and join us today for the baby dedication. We're just so happy. And I know that Minister Bass is saying, Pastor, you're taking it out too far. I want to welcome all of you to Service for Christ Baptist Church. Amen. 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 I think I'm still the worship leader, even though he's in charge. Amen. 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 We've got all the praise. And all the glory for the great, marvelous, and magnificent things that yes, God has yes, done. Yes. My mother was singing that song, Look Where He's Brought Me From. Yes. But I couldn't sing that one we would go to. There's a bright side somewhere. Yes. Oh. Yes. I want your, I want your energy to come up. Now, yes, do what yes. he asked me to do. He asked me to talk about the black history. <laughs> and, then he, and then he criticized me. I, everybody on television is going to edit this part out. Those of you Facebook Live, you can just watch it. But And then he's going to tell me how much time I got. <laughs> so I've been taking over the pulpit. He said, I've been taking over the pulpit every week with Black History. But I said, I got some more. All right. <laughs> Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. I know y'all came here, thought you were going to get in and out real quick. It's not that type of situation. <laughs> Let's deal with the real Black History. All right. All right. I'm going to pile it into something else. I'm going to take up some of uh, Minister Bob Brown's time today because she said that she wanted me to take some of it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, black history. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be very brief on this part of the move to something else. Pay attention, please. So, hundreds of thousands of Africans, both free and enslaved, aided the establishment and survival of colonies in America and the New World. However, Many considered a significant starting point to slavery in America to be 1619. That's black history. Yes. Slavery yes. in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Physical bondage. Yes. Slaves. Over six to seven million slaves brought from Africa to the United States, and they were physically bound and, and duty bound to help establish the foundation of the American economy through free labor. All throughout time, at least around up to 1865, almost 248 years, about 250 years, blacks were indentured in slavery. And we look at the atrocities that took place, they were because they were trying to get their freedom and run away from being in bondage, which they were coming from uh, uh, historical backgrounds of being kings, princesses, and, 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 and rulers of territory in Africa. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the truth, I never got over it. Never got over slavery. Because throughout my lifetime, all I've seen is a bunch of racism, prejudice, and bias <coughs> against black people. And people have died. The people that you heard spoke of today, well, Carl Wilson, and all these people, the uh, people that created so much for the American economy and the world. Uh, 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 toilet students. Okay? The, the, the Eli Whitney. With the cotton gin. Mm -hmm. And all of the uh, freedom fighters. Harry Tubman, Martin Luther King, we talked about in the first week. Mm -hmm came out of that heritage of bondage and slavery, physical mm -hmm. bondage and slavery. That's right. It's a big deal when we start to commemorate it and recognize that for over 200, close to 250 years, the blacks were in bondage and slavery. It's a big deal to commemorate it and recognize it. I want 
a ship. Unfortunately, uh, what we see in the world surpasses black slavery. For what we see in the world today is many who have received the benefit of their skills, talents, and abilities, and who have uh, acquired wealth, have now engaged in a spiritual slavery. Spiritual slavery. For there are those who have resources, and I'm not jealous or angry or upset about anyone having any resources. But they have taken their God-given talent because all, all spiritual gifts, whether you play an instrument or whether you can run and catch a football or shoot a basketball, all spiritual gifts, artists, crafts, whatever gift you have, it comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And people have taken the gift of God, the gift of God, and they have used it for abomination toward our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and they have disowned him, and they are putting up their symbols because they are in spiritual slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, he came, he died, and he shed his blood. He came that we might have life and have life more abundant. Now, what we are confronted with as Christians is spiritual slavery. That's why the book of Ephesians chapter 6 tells us to put on the whole armor of God. Yeah. I'm not standing here for a joke. I'm not standing for a joke. I ask Christian leaders... When people come out and they put their symbols out in front of our eyes and they worship Satan in front of our eyes, I ask Christian leaders, what are you going to do about it? Do we as Christians have a response or are we just turning everything over to Satan? Crickets. Crickets. The room go cold. No. Jesus Christ did not come and die and shed his blood so we can have the... That's enough right there. Thank you, sir. If you failed history in school, I'm sure you got caught up today. Thank you all for your Black History moments. And I hope that someone here has learned, if not something, a whole lot from these different black history moments. Your announcements for today. Um, Faith-based town hall will be conducted by our county executive, Angela, also Brooks, and our chief of police. And they are inviting faith leaders from around the county to join a discussion on public safety. Uh, County Executive also books at Chief Malik Aziz on Monday the 27th of February uh, from 6 to 8. So if there's any uh, anyone who is interested in being uh, on that discussion, uh, please let me know how we can get you that uh, address and that link if you so desire. Um, due to limited seating, they do have it on Zoom as well as in person. Um, so we do appreciate your support and the impact that it has made on our residents in Prince George's County. So if anyone wants to attend that, uh, just let me know. Uh, from your programs, February 20th, that's tomorrow. See that young lady in the back? Where your hair, first lady? She was a part of the Ministers, Wives, and Widows Conference. I think I said that title right. Uh, uh, our ministers of the conference in the area. Um, uh, Mr. Jones, would you like to share anything, any particulars of that service for tomorrow? Good morning, everyone. Basically, it is um, the order of the day, and tomorrow the Baptist Ministry Wives of Washington, D.C. and Affinity will be um, presiding. The preacher of the hour will be Reverend Lionel Edmonds. Uh, he's from Mount Vernon.
Lebanon Baptist Church, and um, the um, program will be at Pilgrim Rest. The address is it's on 4611 Sheriff Road. Right. Got it in the program. <laughs> okay. Uh, as we conclude out in February, in March, starts our spring revival. I don't think I have to share how important it is for members to be at their home when you have guests. I didn't hear no amen. amen. So I tell you what, if someone come and rob you, don't call us. Because <laughs> I will hope you don't want people in your house when you're not there. I say that to say every Wednesday in March, we have our revival. March 1st starts off with Pastor Ron Bragg and Life Covenant Christian Ministry um, from Akakit Road. Amen. Services will start 7 p.m. every night. Um, if you get off at work at 6 o'clock, that don't mean don't come. Come right on after. Amen. You got to stop and pick up the baby, pick up the baby, and come on after. Amen. It's revival time. All right. Amen. COVID has kept us out of our sanctuary long enough. That's right. Amen. COVID has kept us out of our sanctuary long enough. Amen. So it's revival time. Yes. So if you are not doing anything, I, let me take that back. Please set aside Wednesday in March to come be revived. Amen. We have Amen. a different minister each Wednesday. So I'm excited about it. Me too. So I, I, I invite you. Tell a friend, bring a friend. Come after work. Come in dress clothes. Come in street clothes. The invitation is for you. Don't let March pass you by. Amen. 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 Scripture for the week is from Jude 1.20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord and Jesus Christ that leads eternal life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, at this time, we'll go ahead and do our tithes and offerings. Uh, trustees in charge. Amen? Amen.
Lord Jesus, we thank you for the offering that we're about to receive in your name. We pray that it will be consecrated for your use and for your glory. We receive it all, all so that it may be bountiful in your storehouse. Lord God, bless those who could give. And for those who couldn't give, we ask your blessings upon them. Yes. Allow them to be in a position that they will be able to give to your kingdom for your glory. It is in your name, Lord Jesus, that we pray and we consecrate this offer to your treasury for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Catholic Church, they call it uh, a Christian in the Catholic Church, Catholicity. In the Baptist Church, we refer to it as a baby dedication or child dedication. Amen? Amen. So you're not confused about it. Uh, and same thing in the Catholic Church, we call uh, they call it uh, parishioners. In the Christian or Baptist church, we call it a congregation. Mm -hmm. It's a big difference mm -hmm. between the order of worship service. But we're going to ask the uh, parents and the, and the godparents of uh, Parents Mackenzie Brown to come to the altar. Amen. Parents Amen. and godparents. Amen. Amen. I want you to have a seat with your daughter and face the altar. Sit. I think I sit right there in the front row. And I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Jarrell Bass to come and anoint you at this time. Amen. We praise Amen. God for our children. Amen. 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 So active. We have to make way for children. Amen. Amen. But we still must teach them that it is an order for things as well. Amen? Amen. We have to have order and decency in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're just so honored to, to be able to do that. I'm going to read a few scriptures. And uh, Mr. Hopkins, if, if you want to come up on the front row, you can where you are. Okay. Okay. I just want to read a few scriptures uh, concerning children. Mm-hmm. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thy enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. And I will say against God's children. The Bible goes on to say, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he says, generically, he will not depart from it. The Bible says, the wolf shall also dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the family to falling together, and a little child shall lead them. And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. The Bible goes on to say, Take heed that ye despise not one of these ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of the Father which is in heaven. 
And the Bible says, and he took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said to them, Whosoever shall receive one of these children in my name, receiveth me also. Whosoever receiveth me, receiveth not me, but him that sent me. And my brother and sister, I, I, I just uh, want to just read one more verse of the scripture. Amen. And it says, And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked them that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. And again, verily I say unto you, who shall, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. And I like to ask the parents and the godparents, and whoever else is here that would like to support this child, if you can stand on your feet and give in homage that you will support this child. The mother, the grandmother, grandma, you can come up and be with them if you like. You're good. Great grandma, you can come up and be with them if you like. And I want you to repeat yes or no when I ask. In this litany of dedication of this child. I'm so happy and so excited to be here with you today and to pronounce blessings. Blessings indeed. Paris among you. That this is a great day in your life and we're going to commemorate this day in memory of this day that your parents and all your friends are here for you today, Paris. Mm -hmm. Everyone is here for you. And I'm going to ask uh, my wife to stand behind me and take a picture from behind me as I read this dedication. Every child is born of God, hence it is of, it is of utmost importance to recognize the sadness of birth and personality. Paris, go back out. Paris, yeah. Paris go back out to your mother, please. Have to cry, but you gotta go back out there. <laughs> Don't cry. Don't cry, Paris. Here we go, Paris. Paris, here we go. Okay. <laughs> She's just a baby, y'all. Yeah. Just praise God for just a baby. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, we love her, okay? Okay. You know, we, that's why we want kids interested. We want to hear them crying and walking around and doing things. Amen. Amen. There you go. Come on, Paris. You ready now? <laughs> you look good. You got your grandma. <laughs> Great right. grandma. So every child is born of God, hence it is a utmost importance to recognize the sacredness of birth and personality by a public service of dedication or blessing of parents and child. This service is not to be regarded as a sacrament nor as an ordinance but rather as a significant religious ceremony lifted to the ninth degree in the life of the home and the church. The child is from God and belongs to God. The dedication of parents seek to point up their sacred responsibility and is designed to give paramount significance to the task of guidance and protection in behalf of the child. Indeed, Paris Mackenzie Brown in the home and in the church. 
Certainly, this is fundamental. The blessing of little children was a common experience in the life of Jesus, the master, teacher. We would do well to follow his example. Again, they brought forth young children to Christ that he should trust them and his disciples rebuked them those who that brought them again when Jesus saw it he was much displeased and unto them he said suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of God verily I say unto you whosoever shall receive the kingdom of God as a little child he shall enter therein and he took them up in his arms and his hands upon, laid his hands upon them and blessed them. Amen. Dearly beloved, the divine human task of developing a personality after the birth of a child is the most delicate and serious work to which man is called. All the sights and sounds that play upon the sensitive little body help to determine her future characteristics. Even now, as she's going back and forth in the church and, and doing what she knows how to do, trying to contribute to the service. The love of the home affects the child in a thousand ways for good. As the child grows, she may receive the spiritual life, spirituality, Understanding who our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is, and, and, and that is of paramount importance that we not let this child slip away into the hands of Satan Amen. and the wickedness Amen. that is in this world. Amen. You all are standing here as witnesses, and you've given your pledge of honor that you will protect this child. It doesn't just mean food and clothes, but it is also the spiritual nourishment Amen. to be truthful yes. and honest with this yes. child. Yes. To set a good example yes. for this child. Yes. The child cannot defend herself. That's right. She relies upon each one of you. The religious conversation of a mother with her child, even at a very tender age, at, at a very tender age, mm -hmm, will make for her fuller and richer growth coming from the mother. Amen. Talking to the child. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. God will have access to your child if you will keep the doors of your own lives, all of you, open to God. Yeah. If the child does not absorb the beauty, the beautiful sense of God during the, the first critical period of the development of her personality, Usually, she will find the sense of God dim. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is why we have so many people going off the rails right now because they did not receive all the spiritual nourishment that they should have in their upbuilding. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Mm -hmm. Religion is neutral to the human heart and is therefore as much a part of the child's nature as are her dependence on her parents and her trust in them. The child can only look to you all for trust and love. Mm -hmm. yeah. The world will try to destroy them. Mm -hmm. It is your duty, therefore, to receive the child from God's hand because the child belongs to God. And so teach her to know and love God and working in obedience to God's will and help in the unfolding of the child's spiritual life. Do not leave your child in spiritual slavery. From your example, the child must learn to pray. Mm -hmm. From your example, she must learn to read and love the Bible. And from your example, she must learn the way of fellowship with Christ. Mm -hmm. Above all, you are to make, if you uh, consent to constant prayer and effort to lead the child to know and love Christ, so that when she comes to the age of proper understanding, she will choose on her own will to confess Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. To obey him Amen. and to give herself 
in loyalty and loving service as a member of the church, which is the body of Christ. I ask the parents and the godparents and those who will support this child. Do you promise to pray for and with this child? Indeed, Paris Mackenzie Brown, for her growth in knowledge of God and in the spiritual life. We yeah, say we, yeah, we, 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 we do. We do. We do. Do you promise to train this child in body, mind, and soul for service to and to and fellowship with God? We do. Do you promise to do all you can to lead this child at the proper age to confess her faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? We do. What is the name of the child? The name of the child. The name of the child is indeed what? Paris Mackenzie Brown. They have professed, Lord, that it is Paris Mackenzie Brown. Let us pray. I'm going to ask Minister Gwendolyn Hopkins if she would come and offer the dedication prayer. Amen. 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 Can we get the anointing oil? This trash is anointed people at the office. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Proverbs 22, 6, as you already heard in your hearing, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Ephesians 6, 4, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. But bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Psalm 127, 3. To, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Mark 10, 16. And he took them in his arms and began blessing them, laying his hands on them. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. If I said or done anything, I ask you for forgiveness. For if we confess our sins, you are just and faithful to forgive us our sins, God. God, I come right now on behalf of the dedication of Paris McKenzie Brown, my father. God, this is your child, Father God. You knew her before she was even born. God, you that same God yesterday and forevermore, Father God. And I just want to say thank you, God. I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to bless this baby, Father God, as only you can. Bless these parents. Let these parents teach this child, Father God. She's just not someone that came into the world to have food and clothing and a, a place um, to, uh, to sleep in, Father God. But they must nourish her, Father God. They must pray with her, Father God, each and every day, Father God. God, I just ask you to bless the child, that she will be a leader and not a follower, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that she will have her own business, Father God, 
in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you will use her, God, for your benefit, Father God. Use her, Father God, as only you can, Father God. Let her be a blessing to your people, God. I thank you, God, because I thank you for this child being in this church, Father God. And others will follow, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you for this past ambition, Jones, Father God, of this church, Father God, and all the ministers, Father God. I thank you for the family, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, it takes the village to raise a child, Father God. But God, let us know, God, to be careful of what they say in front of this pandemic baby, Father God, because they are so smart and will pick up God. God, it hurts me to think about a six-year-old child, Father God, going to school and shot his teacher, Father God. So God, they got to raise this child up right, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said we can cast all of our cares upon you. For you cared for us, God. For I know your thoughts, Father God. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end, my Father. God, your word said, trust in the Lord will fall down heart. And lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge you. And you shall direct our path, Father God. God, I thank you today, Father God. February the 19th, 2023. Do not let the relatives forget this day. Father God, let them remember the promise. And Pastor Jones, Father God, read all the scriptures, Father God, about raising the child, Father God. Let them forget the scripture and let them be convicted. They don't keep their promise, Father God. In the name of Jesus, God. God, I thank you, Father God. I thank you that this child's going to be raised the right way, Father God. Let the parents read to her, Father God, in the name of Jesus and pray with her, Father God. Because, God, this is spiritual warfare, Father God. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, Father God. Don't let them destroy this child, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, you said, let this man be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus, God. And I say, thank you, God, that we will be able to delight ourselves and give you, and you will give us the desires of our heart, my Father. Only if we are obedient. You said obedience better than sacrifice, my Father. So I thank you. I thank you today, God. I'm so grateful, Father God, to be in the land of the living, to see this day, Father God, for parents being dedicated back to you, Father God. And when she's older, Father God, she'll be baptized because she'll know what it's all about, Father God. So let these parents raise her in the right way, Father God. Let these relatives, Father God, and friends, Father God, keep her in prayer each and every day, Father God. Lord, I thank you today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Both serving for Christ Baptist Church. This is a certificate of baby dedication. This certificate is presented to the TV of Shante Brown to commemorate the dedication of Paris Mackenzie Brown. Your actions today of presenting your daughter at the altar demonstrates exemplary commitment, trust, and fervorness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, evidenced through your willingness to dedicate and entrust your child to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. Mm -hmm. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6, King James Version. Presented on this 19th day of February, in the year of our Lord, 2023, it is sealed and signed by the church officials. Amen. 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 Oh, you want to get baptized already? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Some come to render the selection. I've known uh, Mr. Brown for a uh, large number of years. I can't even remember. I believe that she was a student in one of my classes while I was yes. a professor at Maple Spring. As a matter of fact, several of them. Yes. And she's proven mm -hmm. herself. She's waited over 20 years to uh, do what, not, she didn't wait, but until people would help her to accomplish what God has given to her to do. All right. And we're very pleased, this church, Servants for Christ Baptist Church, we're very pleased to be able to uh, work with her, support her, assist her in her endeavor to go out and propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a big deal. Amen. And she has studied tremendously. Uh, she's gone to Maple Springs Baptist Bible College and Seminary, uh, matriculated to, I believe, the Bachelor of Science degree, which is not something easy to do. Uh, Christian education is, is much more difficult in my view than a secular education, although secular education does have challenges. Christian education is a little bit different. And so I commend her. And I wanted to, uh, it's not about me, but I wanted her to be able to, on this special day where we're dedicating her great grandbaby, I wanted her to be able to deliver a message. They asked me, I said, no, you do it. Amen. Let her do it because this yeah. is your family. Yeah. It's nothing like That's having right. your family to do the service. Amen. It's enough to go around for everybody. We got time yeah. to preach. Amen. Amen. So since she's doing the day, next time I preach, I expect to see all of you in here. I just Amen. 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 The you hear uh, will be that of her son, David, and we want to hear a great message. It's going to be brief, but praise the Lord. She's a great woman of God. Y'all pray for her when she stands to preach because you know that the demonic forces is coming against her when she's preaching. Amen. In Jesus' name, we receive you, brother. Jesus' name, amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Come with some mic right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Consume me, Lord, with the fire of your spirit. Consume me, Lord. Make me more like thee. Break me, Lord, and bless these broken pieces yes, yes. of my life. Let me be used, Lord, by thee. Let me be used. Make me more 
like me. Break me, Lord, and bless every broken piece of my life. Let me be used, Lord, my lead. Let me be used, Lord, my lead. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We thank you, Terrence, for that beautiful song. Yes. Be used by the Lord. Amen. 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 Because he's worthy. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we come today, God, thanking you, God, for everything that has been already done, God. God, we give your name the praise and the glory, yes. and we welcome your Holy Spirit, God, in this place, God. Thank you, Lord. God, we come here to dedicate, God, your child, God, but God, we are all your children, God. Yes, yes. And we all need to dedicate ourselves to you, God, yes. to be used by you, God. Thank you, Lord. So, God, we come today thanking you, God. God, I come thanking you, God, for everything that has been done. Thank you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I come thanking you, God. And, God, I ask you, God, that you would decrease me, God, and increase you, God. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength, God, and my, and my Savior. God, we thank you, God, for what you're going to do. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, this morning, I thank you all for coming today. And I'm not going to be here long because my sermon has already been preached several Amen. times. So I'm just going to add just a little bit to it. Amen. Is that all right for you? Amen. And my scripture is train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. And today we have seen the first example of how you're supposed to train up your child. Mm -hmm. And we thank and we bless Latifia for offering up her child to God. Because in the days, in the moments to come, sometimes a minute, that she knows that she has help raising her child. And that help comes from God. Sometimes we don't have patience but there's a prayer that she can pray because she knows there's a God that sits high and looks low. And he will help her to become patient with her child as she trains her child to, go, to grow in the way that she should go. So I thank you, Latibia, for dedicating your child Amen. today. Amen. 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 God bless you. Um, in looking at our scripture today, our scripture comes from Proverbs 22, 6. Proverbs is the book of wisdom. It's called the book of wisdom. It was written by Solomon, mostly, but there were other wise men. In those days, in Greek, they called the men wise men, and they made practical instructions to make life easy and secure yes. for people. Go ahead. Solomon was David's son. You all know David. Yes. Amen. 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 He had a heart by yes. God. Amen. Amen. He was a man that had a lot of mistakes, but he always prayed and asked God to forgive him. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. So in looking at our scripture today, we see that there is a lot of scriptures 
that you've heard already today. Yes. That God loves children. That's correct. That Jesus has a special value and a heart for children. Yes, that's right. Because as you heard, when they brought the children to Jesus, they tried to rebuke the children. Amen. But Jesus said, let the little children come unto me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And we see that when they asked, the disciple asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Uh -huh. Jesus said, a child, truly, I tell you that unless you change and become like the little children, you would never enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. When I was a little girl, many, many, many years ago, <laughs> I used to go to church, I used to go to Sunday school. One of my favorite songs was Jesus Loves Me because the Bible tells me so. That's a good thing yeah, yeah. to know. Even as a child, teach your children that Jesus loves them, yes, that you love them, yes, but Jesus loves them. That's a song yes, I used to sing all the time. Me too. And then there's another song. Uh -huh. Jesus loves all the little children of the world. Yeah. Jesus loves, and he tells of the colors, the red, the yellow, the black and white. They all are precious in the sight of Jesus. They are, they are. And so we are to train our children train them. Yes. up in the way they should go. Well, that brings me to a question. How do you train your children or raise your children yes. Train your child up in the way they should go. Well, you have to have a goal. Amen. And you have to have the right goal. Because you see, the world trains their children up to become rich and successful. Parents say, if I could afford to give my children anything in the world, I would give them the world. Yes. Children are born into the rich and famous instantly and introduced into a fabulous, lavish material, priceless goodies, and no limits. Yes. There was a picture with a two-year-old child that had a pocketbook that her mom had bought her over $9,000. Mm -hmm. And the child was dressed with thousands of dollars of diamonds. Mm -hmm. Well, there was another person that thought their child to have a $2.5 million pacifier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Raising your children the wrong way. Amen. Then we see, looking at a book, there are many books, but looking at one particular book that says, Raising Successful Children. The world wants successful children. The world wants entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. The world wants their child to grow up and marry the right man mm -hmm. and to have to sit home and live a house of ease. Mm -hmm. But we see, uh, when they did a poll, successful parents taught their children to fix things on their own. Yes. Well, Teaching this child to fix things on his own, it got him three point million dollars. Mm -hmm. He became the founder of the Geek Squad. You know him. We all use him. Mm -hmm. And uh, another person decided to give their child a chance to solve world problems, real problems. This child grew up to have a very successful life. Yes. And she had over a uh, million dollars of international loaning because she began to uh, do the floor map of finances to help companies borrow money back and forth. Uh -huh. But I tell you today, they say also that the key to make their children successful is to let them make their own decisions. Yes. Don't correct them for their actions. 
this, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, is a setup. Yeah. It's a setup. Amen. Amen. Because Matthew 16, 26 says, for what is a man profited if he gains the world and lose his soul? Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good news because we as Christians, we have a different goal. Yes. Amen. We know that our job and our responsibility is to train our children to grow up, to love God, to have a personal relationship with him. That's right. To know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Well, uh -huh, uh -huh. Go ahead. one example that I wanted to share, I heard a horrendous statement, and it troubled me to my heart. Well, that when I heard a pastor say that it's a shame when a parent goes to hell holding his child's hand, uh -huh. yeah. well. that thing was shocked me to my bone. Uh -huh. But Proverbs 22, 6 says, ma makes it clear that if we train our children up in a way they should go, That's right. that when they're older, they will not depart. That's right. So how do we do that? Take your time. First of all, let me put a little pin there uh -huh. because I want to go back to make it clear. Mm -hmm. You see, babies come into the world they are beautiful, they're yeah. small, yes. yeah. and they're cuddly, and we love them. Mm -hmm. But we know that the Bible says that because Adam and Eve messed up, That's right. that man, and they were obedient to God, that man developed a sin nature, and that we were separated from God. But God loved us so much, he had a plan to reconcile us back to him. So that we know that that little cute little baby needs to be trained right. That's right. because he does not know Jesus. Amen. And it's our responsibility yes. to make sure that we raise this child in a way that leads him to Christ. So we need to narrow the path yes. so that he doesn't stray back and forth. That's right. We need to be an example That's right. to our children. That's right. Children, you see, first of all, children will model what they see their parents do. If you want a child to be strong and have a strong relationship with God, uh -huh. then you as the parent have to have a relationship with God. You have to, you have, have, to have a personal relationship yes. with God. Amen. You must know Jesus. Uh, we can read, and this starts as we see today in the infancy stage, which is a little older, but it's okay. Because see, when they're infants, even when they're still in your womb, you can sing to them, you can pray, you can read scripture to them. You can ask God to bless your child. Amen? But then as they get older, then you can pray with them every night. You can pray with them at dinner time. You can read stories. They have Bible, children Bible stories. Yeah. Every day you can pray and teach your children. Yes. They have Bible schools. I remember when I was a little girl, I appreciate it now, but I wasn't too fond of it then. I had to go to Bible vacation, Bible study. I had to go to church in the winter time, spring, summer, and fall. I was in church all the time. In fact, as I got older, and my children can testify to this, I began to raise my children in church all the time. Sometimes we didn't even, hello children, I'm going to tell you. Sometimes we didn't even go home for dinner yeah. because mama would pack a sandwich and we would eat in the car waiting for the next service. Amen? Amen. So as parents, it's our responsibility 
We have to set an example. We have to be a role model. Model. Everything that we do matters. Yes. The way we confront a situation, the way we speak to others, the way we dress, yes. the way we carry ourselves. Our children are always watching us. Right. They, are they are the always. ones that see us when nobody else sees us. Yes. Amen. Right. Right. Yes. Amen. They are the ones that know the real us. That's right. And I may Amen. say that the fastest way that you can turn a child away from Christianity what? is being a hypocrite. Yeah. Yeah. Parents can't not be one way and yeah. do another way. Yeah. We can't be half across Amen. the fence. Amen. We have to decide. Mm -hmm. The Bible says you can't serve two masters right. because you either yeah. love right. one and hate Amen. the other. Amen. So we have to choose this day oh, who yeah. we will serve and have our children serve the God of our understanding and their understanding, which is Jesus Christ. That's right. God, who is the Alpha and the Omega, oh, the right. beginning oh, and right. the ending. Yes. God, who is our creator. Yes. Parents can't say one thing and do another. Amen, amen. We can't say we love God and live a life That's right. that is unpleasant to him. We must walk the walk and talk the That's talk. Right. Our Amen. children Amen. get to witness our walk. Oh, so I ask that. you today, how is your walk? Yeah. How I'm is it you when you leave outside of the church? Oh, yeah. Do you? No one said so. Right. Do you fuss? You start to yes. say the yes. other yes. word. Yes. Do you fuss I at am. the person? when you can't get a parking space. Yes. <laughs> my, my, my. Amen. If somebody cut in front of you, yes. are you teaching your children to be patient, to be kind? Oh, Lord. Are you teaching your children to love one another? Oh. Are you teaching your children to be a servant? Mm. There are plenty of people that need help. I remember... I used to have my boys help out the neighbors. Yes. Mm -hmm. They would take out older people's trash Amen. and they would shovel the snow for them. Yes. I remember one of my children decided that, Mom, this lady only gave me a quarter. A quarter. <laughs> but you see, you have to teach your children that it doesn't matter what is a teachable moment to teach your children as they get older yes. to help and to look out for the elders. Yes. Teach them to respect your elder. Yes. Teach them to honor you as well as other people. Amen. Um, in one example, what I see in the Bible that I'm reminded of because it says that when they are older, they will not depart. Sometimes they might slide or go to the left or go to the right. Uh -huh. But it says they will not depart. That means they will not stay there. Mm -hmm. You see, the prodigal son. I remember the prodigal son in the Bible. He came to his father and he asked for his inheritance. And then after he had squandered and spent all of his money and he found himself in the pigs, sleeping with the pigs, hungry, not any food, the pig food looked good to him and he wanted to eat it all. So. But then all of a sudden, he came to himself. And he remembered, in my father's house, there is food. In my father's house, the servants are treated better than what I am being treated right. now. Yeah. Amen. 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 So when we train our children up right, even if they slide a little bit, then they will come to themselves. If our children fall, they will come to themselves and they will say, I am more than a conqueror. I am victorious. I am the head and not the tail. Yes. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens yes. me. Greater is he that's in me than yes. in the world. Yes. Yes. We have to teach our children to come to themselves. 
because we have to pray. And that means praying without ceasing. Yes. Amen. Amen. I remember, and if you pray and your children see you praying all the time, they will get accustomed to you praying. One day I remember another one of my children uh, wanted a car, and I was so excited. The man seemed like it was a good idea. Then all of a sudden he came up with all of these little things, turns and twists that we had to do. But warning as parents, warning my child to have this car, and I, I had the money, I thought it was a good idea. My child looked at me and said, but mama, did you pray about it? He asked me, mama, did you pray about it? What did God say? I had to look at that child and thank him and say, thank you, Jesus. Because sometimes we as parents forget to pray. I remember even at home, teaching little parents her prayers before she eat. Mm -hmm. One day, I have to admit, sometimes we're human. I'm guilty. I sit down. I was so hungry, I, I started to eat. <laughs> I looked over at Paris, and she had bowed her head. Uh, and she man. was mumbling. Yeah. I said, Paris, I'm sorry, baby. Let's pray. So I had to start back and pray. Paris, teach your children. Teach your children about Jesus. Paris cannot talk completely. She cannot say the endings of some words. So when I'm telling her about Jesus, and I'm reading Jesus, and I'm telling her to say Jesus, Paris comes up with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. But you know, there's one thing about God. God will meet us where we are. Yes. G right. is good right. enough for right. God. That's right. G is good enough for Jesus right, right. now. All because right. he sees that the child is being taught. Yes. And she can't say hallelujah. <laughs> because we're teaching her after you eat, you're thankful that God has given you food. Teach your children to be thankful. Teach them that they're not entitled, yes, but be thankful. Yes. When she, after she says her prayers, we teach her to clap her hands and to say, hallelujah. <laughs> she can't say hallelujah. She says, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Yes. But again, we're teaching her to be thankful. Yes, yes. Amen. Faith. You have to teach your children faith. Faith comes by hearing. They say that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the things unseen. Mm -hmm. You have to teach your children faith. Teach your children who God is. Yes. He's the beginning and the end. Yes. For an example, and they're never too young to teach. Another example, Paris's mom, when she was about five or six, she was in school and she bumped her head. Uh -oh. And she was unconscious. Wow. When her mother and I got to the school, she didn't know who she was. She didn't know who I was or her mother. We had to tell her. But see, that's why you have to train children up in a way they should go. Because children are trusting. Now, she didn't know if I was her mom or that was her, if I was her grandmother or something. But children are humble and they are vulnerable. She went with us. And in taking her home, we stopped to get her something to eat. We put her in the car. We got out the car and she saw a little bird, a little bit of sparrow on the ground. She began to scream, oh God, what is that? She didn't know who a bird was. And then when we took her inside, we set her down for her to eat and we put the food on the table. And she said, what is that and what do I do with it? And we told her, that is food. You need to eat the food and chew it up and swallow it. But then a little while later, while we were sitting there, huh, 
I looked at her and I said, well, do you know who God is? And she said, yes. God is the creator of the world. God created me. I said, okay. Then I said, do you know who Jesus is? She says, yes. Jesus is God's son, and he died for us. My God, this child with the concussion that the doctor said that it would take time for her memory to come back that we need to introduce each one of the members of the family so that she could get used to them, recognize who God was and knew who Jesus was. So that tells you that God would never leave you nor forsake you. Even as a child, God was with her and she never forgot God and she remembered Jesus. Amen? Amen. So we need to be consistent with our children. We need to let them know that Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we need to be consistent with our children. We need to say one thing and do one thing and don't switch up on your children because you will confuse them. Amen. We need to teach your children to be witnesses for Christ. So it says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. Let your children see the way you treat each other. Being a witness, letting them know that God is our savior. God is our protector and God is our provider. We must teach our children to have faith to know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, who are called according to his purpose. So in closing, I'm going to say that John 3.16 is the greatest thing that we can teach our children. Because these days, it's a lot of spiritual warfare going on. Children are being pulled back and forth. We need to teach our children that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. And when God says he gave it to the world, that includes the baby. That includes the fat man. The man without hair. The skinny man. It includes everybody. So we must teach our children that. Mm -hmm. But Romans also says that, but God demonstrated his own love for us while yet we were sin. still in sin. Christ died for, died for, died for us. Yes. Amen. 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 My brothers and my sisters, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus, Mary's baby, came into this world without any sin. But he was faithful because he was obedient to his father. Mm -hmm. And his father said, this is when the doves ascended on him when he was being baptized. This is my son whom I'm well pleased with. He came into the world. In fact, he was already with God. So he left the holy place to come down to die for us, to die for a sinless world. Yes. Amen. Jesus Amen. got up on that old rugged cross. Oh, they stressed him high. They nailed him to the cross. They pierced him in the side. He could have came down, but he stayed there for you, for me. He stayed there for all the children in the world. Yes. Because yes. he doesn't want anyone to perish. Yes. But the story doesn't end there because the third day he got up. Yeah. You see, he went down to hell and he took the keys from the devil and he rose on the third day. And when he got up, he said, I have all power in my hand. And today, because Jesus 
has all power in his hand. Yeah. That power he gave to us because he said, I won't leave you comfortless. Before I leave, I'm going to send you a comforter. So he gave us the Holy Spirit. And we know that he empowered us. The Holy Spirit empowers us. He teaches us to live so that we can have a life more abundantly. That's right. So that we can have a life and our children can have a life. Amen. And when it's all over and it's said and done, we won't be like the rich children that don't have a place to go to, but one place and that's down. We'll be going up yeah. in that great day yeah. in the morning. Yeah. We'll be caught up yeah. in that great day in the morning yeah. because we will be with Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They say, who is going to tell the child about Jesus? Who is going to tell the child about God? I really do believe it's my responsibility yes. to tell the child about God. Thank you, Minister Brown, for that word. In case you didn't notice, and in case you may have forgotten, that's our theme for 2023. Rededication and recommit. So it's not just for the adolescents. It's for the bold and the beautiful. So we thank you. We thank you. We praise God for Paris and we pray God's strength over her. Yeah. Yeah. As we leave from this place, the devil is sure yeah. enough standing yeah. right there on that yeah. concrete. Yeah. 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 My, my, my. It don't have to be you looking for it. Mm. It can be yeah. looking for you. My, my, my. So be prayerful in everything that you do. The doors of the church is open. Let us stand. <clears throat> there may be one this morning who may be able and ready to dedicate their sales to Christ. It doesn't mean that you don't know him. It just means you need to rededicate yourself. Mm -hmm. I have decided to follow Jesus. have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can step forward and receive him today. If there's a doubt in your mind about who Jesus Christ really is, you can come and join in with this church today. You can praise God and thank God Almighty for all that he has done inside of your life. Amen. Amen. Dr. Edna Bell. But perhaps if you want to rededicate and recommit your life to Christ. So we just thank God Think about it. If you're unsaved, and if you don't have a church home, you can come and dedicate yourself to Christ today. Even if you don't join, you can come and dedicate yourself to Christ. You know, one morning, I left home to go play golf. Actually, I was going to a, a fraternity meeting. And as I was coming back home, I fell asleep at the wheel, doing 60 miles an hour. The car was going over to the right. And my mother, who was deceased, shook me and said, wake up. When I got home, I told my wife, I left here this morning, but I almost didn't make it back home. You don't know if today is going to be your day. And it's really, it's no time to play with Christ. If you haven't turned your life over to him, Turn your life over to him today. He died so that you and I could have the right to eternal life. I'm not playing with this. It's nothing to play with. If you want to go to the club and party, fine, do it. That's a waste of time. But we're turning our lives over to Jesus Christ. That's why we sing that song. 
CTV and DCTV, if you have decided to turn your life over to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, repeat after me, Lord God, I'm a sinner before you. Lord God, I turn my life over to you. I dedicate and commit my life to you, Lord Jesus. Please receive me into your kingdom today. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We thank God for all that he's done. For all that he's going to do. There's no time to play with this. No time at all. Rededicate and recommit yourself to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We give God all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. We're going to have our office of the church read it. Uh, what is going on in the name of Jesus? Amen. 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 Sisters and brothers, uh, Dr. Ed Harvard Battle is joining us today uh, under watch care. Amen. Right. Amen. Uh, she, as she said in her uh, in the welcome, she hails from uh, Port Mount Olive Baptist Church in Leesburg, Virginia. Recently moved to this area, and we are happy to have you uh, in uh, this branch of Zion. Amen. 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 Uh, you heard the reading from our official uh, administrative clerk. Trustee, everything, everybody. So we got a lot of positions open. Amen. Amen. And so what is your pleasure? Brother Pastor, I make a motion that we accept uh, Dr. Edna Battle uh, on watch night service. Watch care service. That'll be next year. Uh, <laughs> you gotta wait, you gotta wait. Uh, given the right hand of fellowship, and after having the right hand of fellowship, having any all privileges than any other member of the Service for Christ Baptist Church. Amen. You heard the, Amen. You heard the motion. Amen. Amen. And, and we heard the seconds, second, second. And so, are you ready for the question? Question. question. All in favor, let it be known by loud. Amen. 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 Those opposed, amen. Amen. No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't. He, he, he's still a minister in training. <laughs> 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 sister, Dr. Edna oh, Bell, come on up. You know, we, we love you so much, and, and, and we praise God for you, for you coming and joining in with us. Lord, no, we need some help. No, no. Yeah, and assistance, and so... We thank God for any person that is willing to come to this church. There's so many churches that she could choose, but we thank God that she came here. Amen. 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 Welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. If my wife wasn't there, I'd give you a, a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Since she did, I'd give you a hug. 
Now to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. To your own wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever.